and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. My name is Guy and today we're going to be looking at good player skills when it comes to answering questions that your GM might pose to you. Now that's quite a uh, mouthful in terms of a title but what it really boils down to is that dreaded question that we often will get from GMs who are trying to improve themselves or just who want some kind of feedback. So what did you guys think of the game? Now, this is a loaded question. The GM is asking you what you thought about the game, but also what you thought about them as a game master. And so oftentimes, friendship is going to cloud our response. It's going to perhaps make us go, well, um... Now you're great. If you didn't make your deception check there, I was being completely false. So how do we do it? How do we give answers that are going to prevent our game masters from feeling as if they've been let down or betrayed or lied to by their friends, but at the same time prevent them from walking away and never running a game again? I believe that we need to encourage our GMs rather than to berate or belittle them. So I think there's three different spaces that you can operate as a player to make useful, helpful, constructive, personal comments that will not get you into hot water emotionally within your friendship circle, but will absolutely help you to create and to help support and generate a great GM. Sounds kind of contrary, doesn't it? To be a, a great player helping to make a great GM. But the two go hand in hand. The better your GM, the better you can be, the better you can be as a player to free up your character. So you're not worrying about the GM stuff, you're worrying about your own personal stuff. So let's go into it. So with personal, with personal, I always try and relate it to myself. Now, this is not to say that I say, well, I would do it better than you because I am just better. No. When I say relate to self, I mean to relate it to how you experienced it. When I was playing in your game today, I was having a lot of fun. I did find that the traps were a little bit difficult for us. And I wasn't sure if that's because of the environment or because maybe we weren't supposed to go in there. So you relate it to self. I didn't feel this. I didn't think this. I didn't understand I didn't experience talk about it from your own perspective that's the only perspective you can talk about it don't talk about it from well we felt that it was difficult because now you created a group which is ganging up against your GM so always from self always remember to compliment as well a GM has put in a phenomenal amount of work usually speaking to make sure the game has worked out as an enjoyable experience they're juggling narrative and plot and trying to keep your character's stories going as well as making on the fly rules calls and adjustments and that sort of thing so they have done a large amount of work generally speaking you need to acknowledge that. You need to recognize that. So even if it felt like a complete disaster, there must have been something that they were doing right. So even if it's a case of saying, you know, I really appreciate you taking this risk to GM for us. I know we can't be an easy group to do. Well, sorry, I've broken that first rule. I know I can't be an easy player to GM for. So I really appreciate the time that you took to do that. That's an important little sentence to add in there. You want to build up. Now, the next one, the most important one, do not let your ego get in the way. If you let your ego get in the way, what are you doing? What are you doing? You are saying that you are better than the GM. So when you are providing help, when you're providing support, when you are providing feedback, it's not a case of saying, I would have done it differently. I would have done it like this and this and this. Giving examples of how you are brilliant does not help somebody else become brilliant. It is merely a way of putting yourself on a pedestal above that person rather than helping that person. I can't stand it when people say, well, you know, so-and-so was a better GM in three weeks and you've been now GMing for three months and you're still terrible. So-and-so is not you. So it's not helping you in terms of this case, the GM, become a better GM. Comparing the GM to somebody else, especially yourself, is very detrimental. And there's two reasons for it. Either you are better than the GM, in which case the GM is going to feel like, well, I can never live up to that person's expectations because I know that they're brilliant. So I'm actually going to just, I'm going to give up because I can't ever get there. Or they're going to look at you going, well, you are actually crap. 
I have no interest in your opinion because you're actually a lowly worm and I don't care about it. So by adding in your ego, you're creating a very, very horrid, very toxic space in which to try and help your GM. You're not actually going to help your GM. So express your feelings only. Don't express your opinions. And here's a reason why. Your opinions are your own. What you think makes a good story, what you think makes for an interesting engagement is not what somebody else thinks. That's your opinion. So when you express your feelings, those are genuine. Those are yours and those you can claim right ownership to. I felt that the encounters were perhaps a little too routine. But you don't need to go further. You don't need to say, I would have then done it this way. Unless the GM asks you, how would you have done it? What would you have done differently? But again, don't jump on your high horse and say, well, if you, I would have done it this way and this way and this way and this way. This whole channel might feel like it's trying to tell you how to do things. And I certainly present things in black and white. But that's only so that you can build an opinion of how you would do it in comparison to what I've said. And I will happily tell people to go and watch other channels on how to be a great GM as well. Channels that talk about statistics, that talk about the mathematics, of alternative storytelling. All of those are just helping you to become a better person. Having said that, this is a training channel, so it's about giving you options that you can then work with. Your GM is not in training. Your GM is asking you as the player how you felt. So make sure it's your personal feelings more than anything else. Now, when it comes to what is something that's helpful, never dismiss what the GM has done or what the GM says. If you say to the GM, I felt that the encounter was a little bit lackluster, and the GM says, well, yes, no, absolutely, I wanted it to be that. I'm, I'm doing that for a reason. That's a good enough reason for why that encounter was that way. The GM might be trying to set it up so the next encounter is much more difficult, so there's a juxtaposition between the powers. So don't dismiss it as bad GMing. Unpack it, understand it. Ask the GM, I felt that, I or I, I thought that this was a little bit tricky for us, I, for me. I, 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 I couldn't get it. I couldn't understand this particular riddle. And you didn't give us help. Again, I'm using the us. You see, I can't help it. You didn't give me any help in terms of trying to overcome that. So how did you want me to do that? What was your thinking there? So I'm not saying to the GM, you gave us a tough riddle and you suck. I'm saying I couldn't figure it out, which is the truth, obviously, in this particular case. So understand, sorry, understand what the GM was thinking. Understand what they were going through. Well, yes, the riddle was too tough. I made a mistake. Aha, you've helped the GM to realize that they've made a mistake in this particular instance. Or the GM says, well, yes, but that's because you didn't talk to any of the NPCs that you're walking past. And they all were trying to offer you advice, but you just ignored them. Aha, now you've become a better player because you've realized that you actually are not engaging with NPCs. So do you see how it creates such a wonderful dialogue to talk to when you talk about yourself, your feelings, rather than your opinions and how you would have done it? support the GM. Be there. Say to them, listen, I know you're a bit dodgy on the rules. I'm very good at the rules. So can I provide you rules support? So you can turn to me and say, what's the rule on that? And I will give it to you. And if I can't give it to you, whilst you carry on with the other players, I will go and look it up for you. I will give you that support. Or if you want to, I'll keep track of time so that when you look at me, I'll tell you the exact time or I'll give you that kind of support. So offer support. If you feel that the GM is perhaps lacking in certain areas, don't say you're a bad GM because you don't know the rules. Offer your support instead so that you can help them to learn those rules. And then answer questions openly. Don't answer with veiled answers. Now, I'm very bad at that because I hate giving my personal opinion because people seem to inv people invest a lot in what I say when it comes to role playing. I can understand why, but I still don't feel that my answers should have more weight than anybody else's. They naturally do, so I tend to hold back. This is a failing of myself and I am working on it. I'm trying to come to terms with when people ask me for my opinion that I have to just give it to them freely and openly. And I have been doing that. So a lot of people have been getting some rather uh, tough answers back from me when they're saying, well, my GM is not letting me do this and I don't feel it's fair because my GM said that I couldn't do it and I, etc. etc. I'm like, well, sometimes it's your fault. Anyway, I digress. So answer questions 
openly. Now, how do we be constructive? So you focus on improving, not fixing. Now, that for me is the important thing, is you have to fix. Uh, you don't have to fix, you have to improve, sorry. <laughs> There's nothing to fix. We're storytellers, we're telling a narrative. Yes, rules knowledge needs to be improved upon. It can be corrected, not necessarily fixed. So don't try and provide solutions, provide support, provide information, provide uh, direction, but don't try. Well, you should really just go and read the rules. That'll fix the problem. That won't fix anything because if the GM hasn't even bothered to try and read the rules, then you're in a, you're in a different problem altogether. But if the GM, like myself, has read the rule book multiple times and goes, I can't remember. I've got so many rule books stuck up in here that I can't remember which one applies to which. Ah, now I'm going to help support you. I'm going to help improve you to try and compartmentalize those by just reminding you every now and again. This game is all about talking. And if you're not talking, if you're not working that space that you're in, then you're missing out on a great opportunity to provide really good support and to help improve your game rather than to just miss it. Now, again, provide alternatives, don't provide solutions. If that hasn't been made clear in this video, I don't know what. When the GM says, I think that I did a great job and I thought that encounter was fantastic, what did you think? And you say, well, I personally felt that the encounter was a little bit overpowered. And the GM says, oh, well, how would you fix that? Don't say, oh, well, I would have actually had three UNT and five orcs and 15 ogres rather than 20 dragons. That solution that you provided doesn't help the GM become a better GM because you haven't explained why you would have done that. You haven't provided an alternative for the GM. You've just provided a solution. So to provide an alternative, it would be better to say, well, you gave us those 20 dragons to fight. And I think that the dragons, because they were all the same, it felt as if they were basically one big creature. So perhaps think about mixing it up next time with multiple creatures, because then each one's going to have a different type of attack and a different type of this and a different type of that. So in other words, you are explaining your alternative solution rather than just providing a stock standard solution. And I think that is the most constructive that you can possibly be. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, 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 dear. Well, now you know um, what the... Um, next video is going to be on <laughs> i'm still getting used to the system please forgive me give me give me support don't give me criticism so how did that get in there anyway all right so well now you know what's coming up next week player versus player uh that's an interesting interesting topic for both gm and for player how do we handle that so back to good player skills good player skills is a lot about forgiveness a lot of support a lot of constructive help not your ego grandstanding as to why you would be better than the current GM. Because if you do generally feel that you would be a better GM than the current GM, step up and become a GM yourself. And then you can experience the wonderful world of asking players for their feedback and getting it. No, it was fine. It was great. It was lovely. I might be busy next week uh, for, for the rest of my life, actually. That doesn't help anybody. That doesn't build anything. That doesn't improve anyone's game. It simply gives you your Friday nights off. Anyway, until next time, I hope that you have found this video useful and that it will inspire you to provide your GMs with more comprehensive feedback that is supportive and constructive rather than destructive and disparaging. And uh, that can only make your games that much better. Anyway, until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of playing.